Hi friends, welcome to this last session on linear regression. Before this, we had two sessions. One was uh, simple linear regression, one was multiple regression. Today is going to be the final session in this series. I may be making further videos on different uh, regression related uh, things. But as part of the series, this will be the last video. In today's video, we will cover some of the things that we could not cover in the last two sessions and then we will also uh, see a very simple uh, regression model uh, using R. So in the last video we kind of left off at this point uh, so assumptions for linear regression so whenever we are using regression for doing any kind of predictions we have to make sure that the assumptions are uh, true or at least approximately true if uh, they are not then uh, maybe regression is not the right algorithm to use so whenever you are building a regression model make sure that the assumptions there are actually uh, when i was uh, researching i saw that there are a lot of actually assumptions uh, you know different people have mentioned different kinds of assumptions but you should at least remember four five of them uh, to test and these are uh, some of the important ones uh, that there should be linear relationship there should be a normal distribution of error terms no multicollinearity no autocorrelation and homocedasticity these are the important ones and there could be other ones also but if you are asked the question in an interview or something make sure that you mention few of these and uh, also when you are building your regression model make sure that you are testing whatever you are able to test to know that um, you your model is going to be accurate uh, so linear relationship right so it's linear regression obviously obviously there has to be linear relationship so if the relationship between independent and dependent variables is not linear then using a linear regression model on such a data will not give us correct predictions so by using graphs such as scatter plots we can identify the type of relationship between independent and dependent variable, right? So we need to make sure that the relationship is linear and we can do it with the help of a very simple scatter plot. Then comes normal distribution of error terms. So I wanted to highlight uh, the difference between error term and residual because I think in the previous videos I kind of use them interchangeably which is not that much wrong but because we are talking here about normal distribution of error terms I just wanted to kind of um, distinguish and tell you what is error and what is residual so when I'm talking about error terms I'm talking about the difference between the observed value in the sample and the true value in the population because remember we have taken a sample from our population and building our regression model there is a population and that has the true value but we have only taken the sample so our model is only a representation of the true uh, population model right so there will always be a difference because of sampling and then residual is the difference between the observed value and the predicted value right the value that the equation a regression equation is predicting so that's what we ha have always been talking about observed value and predicted value but also remember that there is a true value which is the true value of the population uh, then typically the error terms in a linear regression model follow a normal distribution this phenomena is based on central limit theorem which states that aggregation of many random variables will, will result in a normally distributed random vari variable given sufficient sample size. So we have already discussed about central limit theorem normal distribution so you can go ahead and uh, give it a check but error terms in linear regression model uh, do follow a normal distribution and uh, if they are not then maybe that it's not the uh, right algorithm and many tests such as QQ plots help us to determine normality so I forgot to write here but if the QQ plot is at 45 degree angle then it means that the error terms are normally uh, distributed and there are some other uh, tests also you can go ahead and give it a check but definitely this is one of the important assumptions for uh, linear regression 
the next one again important uh, multicollinearity so multicollinearity uh, again asked in interviews a lot so it means that there is a high correlation between the independent variables right so they are very related to each other uh, such a correlation creates problem in finding the true relationship between dependent and independent variables so they kind of interfere with each other and then what happens is that the prediction of the dependent variable gets affected so we have certain ways to find out multicollinearity obviously we can have a uh, you know we can calculate the correlation we can create a correlation matrix and we can find out uh, we can also do a scatter plot and there is something called uh, variance inflation factor which can also be used to uh, identify multicollinearity and if it is um, greater than or equal to five then it means that there is a very high degree of multicollinearity so maybe we can remove uh, one of those variables or maybe we can create a new feature which combines the correlated variables into one variable so then there is no interference with each other right but it's a very important concept make sure that you understand what it is and why uh, you know it occurs and how can we uh, detect it and how can we avoid it right i have just mentioned a few things here but there are more to, more to it so please go ahead and explore it further uh, then comes autocorrelation so according to this assumption there should not uh, there should be no correlation between the residual error terms right so here again i have used residual and error kind of interchangeably but it applies to both of them so this uh, issue is generally found in time series data where the next observation is dependent on the previous observation and presence of autocorrelation can reduce the model's accuracy you know so uh, for all these assumptions if they are present then the models uh, um, if, if they are not true then our models accuracy will go down and there is something called Durbin Watson statistic which is used to test for uh, autocorrelation and then homocedasticity so if the variance in residuals is unequal which is called as heterocedasticity it point towards irregularities in the data such as outliers right so if my variance uh, my variance should be kind of equally distributed around the mean but if it, that's not the case uh, then that means there are outliers in my data uh, ideally we would like to avoid unequal variance to build an accurate and stable uh, model so evaluating residual versus fitted values plot helps us to identify the presence of unequal variance uh, and if uh, heterocedasticity exists the graph will display a fan shaped pattern you know we have already um, kind of discussed a little bit about uh, unequal variance so this is what it is so there should be uh, this is this is where we are talking about residuals so remember that what we are talking at what uh, point right so this one normal distribution it's related to the error terms multicollinearity it is related to the correlation of the independent variables autocorrelation it is correlation between the residual terms and then homocedasticity variance in the residuals right so remember what uh, uh, assumption is related to which particular thing in the equation whether it is related to the independent variable to the residuals or to the error terms right so don't confuse that because then when you have to explain it in an interview then don't uh, <laughs> explain one as the other especially uh, autocorrelation and a multicollinearity because they both talk about correlation it's very easy to get confused about these two so make sure you uh, remember uh, what they are talking about okay now let's check uh, another two concepts r squared and adjusted r squared we have already talked about r squared before so r squared is the explained variation divided by the total variation right so r squared tells us how well our model is explaining the variation in our predicted variable 
right so higher it is that means that our model is doing a really great job in explaining the variation and that means that we have created a really good model and uh, the formula for it is uh, this one minus the sum of squared residuals divided by the uh, total uh, variation right so the residual is the unexplained variation isn't it because that's uh, uh, kind of the difference between the actual uh, uh, value and the predicted value so that difference is what we have not been able to explain or our model has not been able to explain uh, and uh, uh, so uh, so one minus that uh, unexplained variation divided by the total variation is what is our r square and uh, i think we discussed before that it is uh, explain it is uh, given by a number between 0% to 100% and the closer it is to 100% it is better it's good but uh, sometimes it uh, cannot be completely relied upon so uh, r square is used to evaluate the model quality right so the, the higher it is the better is the model quality but the problem is that it always increases even when non-significant independent variables are added to the equation right so one of the things when we want that we want to do when we are evaluating our model is that we want to make sure that the correct independent variables are being included in our model we don't want to unnecessarily complicate our model by adding way too many insignificant uh, variables which do not really play an important part in prediction but if we completely rely on r square then it may become a bit harder for us to know uh, whether adding another new variable is really making a difference uh, in our uh, model's uh, prediction power or not because anytime we add another variable irrespective of how significant it is or not r square will keep on increasing so an increase in r square does not always signify that the model actually became better by addition of a new variable so we need to keep that in our mind therefore another parameter called adjusted r square is used which only increases when there is actually an improvement in the model right so when we do our regression uh, model building then in the output we get both r square and adjusted r square so we can compare uh, the two of them and then we can take a decision as to um, uh, you know whether uh, ad addition of the new variable really made a difference uh, to our model or not and adjusted r square is calculated by this uh, particular formula and it takes the r square as an input and then it takes the P is the number of predictors that is the number of independent variables and then n is the sample size of our data right so uh, again this is again not a completely end-to-end uh, -end explanation of these two things I may have to make further videos on this but I hope it still gives you an intuition about what is R square and what is adjusted R square and and why do we need an adjusted r square when we already have uh, one r square okay so i think we have uh, discussed a lot of things now so we are ready to go ahead and uh, build a linear regression model i i'm going to use r to do that and uh, uh, you know if you are not familiar with R I suggest that you definitely learn it it's a very easy to learn scripting language um, but it is very powerful it can perform so many things very very easily so you should definitely learn it and uh, let's go ahead then and get started so whenever we are uh, doing any kind of um, modeling and we are building machine learning models uh, we need to follow certain steps like a best practice uh, the best uh, sorry the first uh, one is exploratory data analysis or eda where we try to understand our data further like the descriptive statistics of our data the distribution of our data 
how many rows and columns are there you know what is the meaning of each variable uh, you know the correlation between different variables so those are the kind of things we try to understand here and we use a lot of visuals at this point uh, to understand our data the next step is data pre-processing here we actually get our data ready for modeling so things like building dummy variables or binning or uh, you know um, changing the data types or creating new features you know so a lot of steps are taken like you know uh, dealing with missing values or outliers you know so data cleaning so we do so many things in data pre-processing so the amount of time spent in eda and data pre-processing is quite high and it is a uh, good to also spend a lot of time doing it because the better your data is and the more you understand your data the better will be the model that you will build right so spend as much time that you can on this uh, first two uh, steps the next step is model building obviously based on your uh, edn data pre-processing and what kind of business problem you are trying to solve choose the uh, right algorithm uh, and build your model and uh, evaluate your model so building the model and evaluating it kind of goes hand in hand because you will be constantly evaluating and then based on your evaluation result you may go back and make some changes to the model you built and then come back and evaluate it again and then go back so it will be a kind of an iterative trial and error uh, kind of process and uh, it is here that you will be looking at the output of your model uh, and taking some decisions about which variables to keep which variables to remove uh, or whether you need more data or you know so a lot of decisions you would be taking and then finally once your uh, model is ready and you're happy with the accuracy of your model your the stability of your model and uh, you do some predictions with it and uh, and that's not the end of it you know when um, you get to know more about your business uh, if you collect more data or uh, you know the entire product changes or is enhanced or or new things come into picture which were not previously known you may go ahead and again update your model and enhance it model so that it continues to uh, do a good uh, prediction right so these are the uh, high level steps and if you are doing a data analytics projects there are other steps you know it may sometimes start from data collection itself so we have already discussed many sampling techniques so it may start from there and then after this you may be presenting it to uh, some stakeholders who gave you the business problem to begin with and you may be creating some reports some documentations some visualizations uh, and share it uh, with them or uh, your model may be implemented in the production environment and uh, used uh, uh, in the live environment right so there are other steps also but this is just specific uh, to building the model okay so that brings us to our uh, our script for uh, the example regression so for this one i used uh, one of the existing r data sets which is the air quality data set so first step I'm just loading the data so your data could be anywhere it could be in a excel sheet it could be a csv it could be google sheet it could be in a relational database it could be on the cloud uh, it could be a text file you know there could be multiple data sources right it could be a like a statistical spss file uh, so depending on what kind of file you are dealing with you have to use the appropriate function uh, to read it and load it into R and same goes for Python right whatever uh, data source you have you either uh, you know connect to that data source if it is a database you connect it to, uh, directly to it from R or Python and you get the data loaded into your um, uh, you know in, uh, to your local uh, data frame uh, well this is just uh, an existing data set I'm just loading it into a local data frame here otherwise there would be maybe a read statement or some kind of an sql statement to load the data okay so let's look at our data so it's an air quality data uh, 
so we have just 153 rows and then we have one two three four five six uh, variables temperature is the variable that we want to predict and then we have our independent variables uh, ozone solar wind month and day so month uh, the numbers are representing the uh, month and uh, uh, then we have uh, the day which is the day of the month so they have 1 to 31st and then again 1 to uh, 30th depending on which uh, month it is and these are all just numeric data and you can see that there is some missing data in ozone and some missing data in solar but the rest of them they look fine okay there's a very small data set but if it is a bigger data set, we might have to spend more time to understand it. But okay, in R, there is a command called head. If you do that, it will show you the first uh, few rows of data. So you can take a look at that. And then we have another command called structure, str. So that tells you the structure of each of the uh, uh, columns, right? So you can see ozone is integer. Uh, Solar is integer, wind is integer, uh, sorry, wind is numeric, and temperature, month and day, they are all integers, right? That's that's how the data comes with. Then we have another function called summary. And if we do that, it shows us the minimum, the maximum, the first quartile, third quartile, median and mean. We have studied all of this in the descriptive statistics, but it, this one really helps you to just understand how your data is distributed on a high level, what are the values in it. And it also shows you if there is any missing value, like there are 37 missing values in ozone, there are seven missing values in solar. So NA means missing value, okay? So yeah, so that's what it is. Let's look at the distribution of our uh, dependent variable temperature. Okay, so you can do that very easily by using this histogram function in R. Uh, so it looks pretty normally distributed. Uh, so let's look at the relationship of each uh, dependent variable so each independent variable with our dependent variable temperature. So the first one is ozone versus uh, temperature so it seems like they do have a positive linear uh, relationship there are just few outliers nothing um, to be worried about and uh, remember we just have 150 rows of data if we had more maybe this would have been much uh, stronger correlation uh, the next one we have solar let's run that okay so this one doesn't seem to be there is any relationship in that it's uh, all randomly distributed uh, the next one is the relationship between wind and temperature so this one seems like there is a linear relationship but it is a negative relationship and i think that makes sense because whenever there is high wind uh, the temperature generally goes down isn't it so okay that makes sense uh, the next one is the uh, day versus temperature so again this is kind of like solar there is no correlation between temperature and day of the month and that makes sense isn't it, it i mean whether the day is the 31st of january or is the first of january it doesn't really make much difference on uh, the temperature but the month may make difference if it is january or it is uh, may you know summer winter that could have a uh, uh, impact on the temperature so okay so it looks like uh, month five and uh, month nine are kind of uh, lower as compared to six seven and eight there's not like a huge huge difference but there is still some uh, difference in the uh, temperature uh, okay, so that was a little bit of exploratory data analysis where we try to understand our data, we try to understand the correlations and things, you know, you can do a lot of uh, analysis at this stage and, uh, you know, it could take multiple days in a real life project to do the EDA. Uh, 
and then we have data preparation so here we're just going to do a little bit of preparation we have some missing data in ozone and in solar so we are going to populate them with their mean values and uh, so that's what we are doing here in this step we'll just populate the mean value uh, which is this 42.12 so here you can see that that value got populated in certain rows so that's where all the missing data was there and then same thing for solar we can do it and if we go here again uh, the mean value is 185.9 so yeah so it got populated in uh, like here and uh, here right so now we don't have any more uh, missing data okay and then uh, here we can also build like a correlation matrix and we can see how all the different variables are correlated to each other so this diagonal is all one because it is the relation of same variable with itself so obviously it's all one but if we look at uh, whatever we see saw in the scatter plot we can see here like day has a very little correlation remember correlation goes from minus one to plus one so this is kind of very low negative correlation uh, wind has kind of high month has high ozone also has pretty high in fact is the highest uh, it has the highest correlation with temperature uh, solar is less but it's not as less as uh, day uh, and then there doesn't seem to be any high correlation between the uh, independent variable so which is a good thing there's nothing in like 70s or 80s so okay all right uh, so now that we have tested all of those things so let's now go ahead and run our actual model so that's the only line that i need to run to build my regression model so i have to use this function called lm and uh, here i give the variable uh, name of my independent uh, my dependent variable and then I give the list of all my independent uh, variables that I want to uh, use I have skipped using day because it seemed to have very little impact on uh, temperature uh, but I have kept solar but I've removed day and then I uh, I'm going to run my model and here uh, you, you just need to give data equal to the air quality data so that it knows from where it needs to pick all these variables right so once that's done so let's just run it so our model is done it was really fast in real life it may take more time we just have 153 rows obviously so that it ran really fast and then uh, we come to evaluating our model so when i do summary and i give the name of my model in brackets I get an output that, like this and this is a very typical uh, output of regression that you will see uh, you know irrespective of how much data you have this will be kind of the output that you you will see and these are all the things that we have discussed right we have discussed residuals uh, coefficients standard error significance and here is where we have the r square and the adjusted r square and we can see here that our R square is kind of 51% and our adjusted R square is around 50%. So it's not a very great model because remember R square is between 0 to 100% and the closer it is to 100%, that much our model is explaining our uh, dependent variable, the variation in dependent variable. So this one is only explaining around 50% of the variation, right? So it's not doing a really great job. So in real life, maybe I would go and um, build some features at this step or, uh, you know, uh, um, somehow um, play around with my data a little bit more. And if it still doesn't work, I will go and get more data because I think in this case, this specific case, the 153 rows of data is very, very less. So maybe if I had, you know, 10,000 rows of data, I would have gotten a much better model which uh, with a higher R square, higher adjusted R square. But uh, for this, for the sake of 
just an example i think this is enough but uh but yeah so this is what i'm getting my r square value so uh so at this step where you evaluate your model and if you're not happy with these results maybe you will go back to data pre-processing and you will play around more and do some feature building or something to uh, uh, you know help improve the accuracy and uh, or you can also like add remove some variables and see if that is increasing the accuracy in any way so this uh, these are this is our intercept you know and these are all the coefficients for each of the variables that we have uh, and these stars are actually telling us how important each of these uh, variables are so and, and and they are all related to like the significance uh, uh, significance level uh, and then we also have p value over here and i don't think i have ever talked about f statistic uh, but that's another uh, uh, you know variable that helps us to uh, test and determine our model accuracy and all uh, so so yeah so that's how uh, the output will look like and then based on this uh, it seems like uh, you know our model is not that great it seems like ozone and uh, month are really doing a good job in uh, in predict predicting and then uh, let's uh, build this uh, there's something called plot function plot so I'm trying to kind of plot my model. So let's see what happens. So this one gives me the residual versus uh, the fitted, right? So if I go back, see homocedasticity, isn't it? This is where you need to check residual versus fitted values uh, plot. So it doesn't seem like there is any uh, heterosedasticity kind of thing going on here there's no fan shape so that's good uh and then i'm going to use this particular library to kind of uh, oh sorry okay uh so uh, so this particular function actually uh, allows us to build multiple plots so this is the qq plot that i was talking about if you remember uh let me go back there this one uh, normal distribution of error terms you can test it with the help of qq plot so that's what uh, is happening here this is the qq plot and it is at 45 degree angle so that tells me that my residuals are normally distributed okay uh, so few other uh, plots they come in i don't know what all of these plots mean but definitely the first two are important residual versus fitted one uh really important uh okay so next i talked also talked about the vif isn't it it uh, helps us to uh, look at our multicollinearity so you can use this library fmsb and then you can use the vif function within that library to kind of determine uh, if there is multicollinearity so uh, we are going to do each uh, variable um regression with the rest of the variables so that's how you will determine so if i do the first one so that is a month so it comes to the vif comes to 1.05 then the second one and i if you remember i told you that it should be less than equal to five uh, if it is more than five then our model is not doing good uh so yeah and if it is do if it is like one then it's doing, there's like really really good and there's no multicollinearity issues going on but we have a little bit more than one so there is some multicollinearity but it's not really bad or anything okay and then let's look at our residuals here they are normally distributed uh so so that was kind of you know uh validating the normal uh, regression normal the linear regression assumptions and the uh, building our model and evaluating it a little bit and then finally if i want to make a prediction i will give some data and i will uh, use the predict 
function to predict a new temperature based on my input so here i gave new values for solar wind ozone and month and then my model predicted that the temperature will be 73.5 degrees so guys uh, that's how you can uh, build a regression model and you can play around with all the data and you can uh, improve the accuracy uh, of it it takes some patience and it takes few days to build a good regression model that works uh, so yeah so i think um, that's all that i wanted to cover for regression in this uh, series for now <laughs> uh, we will definitely have some more videos in future for you know at some of the other uh, stuff you know like the f statistic that we saw you know and uh, but yeah but next uh, weekend we will do decision trees i think somebody requested a video on that so next sunday i'll do decision trees i'll talk about how, what they are and maybe we'll look at some code for that also so thank you guys thank you so much hope this was useful as usual if you have any uh, requests for any videos let me know and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on facebook so thank you so much i hope you have a great week ahead and as usual i will be posting a ggplot2 video on tuesday i haven't decided what other video i will make for thursday but i will let you guys know as soon as i have decided so thank you and talk to you guys soon